invited political analyst John Dadian in this morning to break this all down for us, including the latest developments as of yesterday. Hey, John, thanks so much for coming. Good morning. We certainly do appreciate it. Sure. I just want to get your reaction to what Irene McCormick Jackson had to say yesterday. Well, I've been saying for several weeks that I thought that a resignation probably will come sooner rather than later because I said that once a face gets attached, once actual specific allegations get attached, that's when it's going to start really picking up speed quickly. And we saw the start of that yesterday. We saw the start of that yesterday. But do you think, because he did issue another statement a few hours after Irene spoke yesterday, saying, once again, I am not going to resign. Do you think at this point he's just adamant on that, or do you think he will step down? It's, it's amazing. One of the cliches that I like is when you're in a hole, stop digging. So I don't know why he even issued any type of response, especially now since he has a private attorney. I'm sure his attorney is telling him, do not talk about this particular thing. Just try to keep running the city. One of the reasons why I think that uh, he's going to stop down is because clearly the indication so far is probably the city's not going to pick up his legal tab. So he can only go so far uh, until he runs out of money, and then they'll probably cut a deal saying if you resign, we'll drop you out of it, but then the lawsuits against the city will probably continue to go through. Okay, well, let's ask you about that for a moment, because I think there's a bit of confusion as to who starts paying for what now that not only the city is being sued, but Mayor Filner as well. Um, I was led to believe that the mayor, now being a city employee, would be covered by the city attorney in a situation like this, but that's not necessarily correct. No, and the city attorney specifically very clearly said they had, he had absolutely he said we will not be representing mayor in any circumstances. So that's point so number one. So he's on his own for his own attorney. Right now, yes. Now he can request the city to pay for it, and if he does formally request that, that's the decision is made by the city council whether or not to do that. And right now, the nose count that I have is the majority. There's still a couple of council members who are still supporting him, but the majority of council is not supporting him. Have called for his resignation, so I don't see that vote going through. Okay, but when it comes to the lawsuit against the city of San Diego, that's where the taxpayer dollars come in to pick up that tab. Although you were mentioning during the commercial break when we were speaking that the city can then turn around and sue. Filner. And that's that's another reason, not the only reason, but that's another reason why the city attorney says he won't represent him because there'll be a conflict down the road. But yeah, let's say the city loses to Irene McCormick Jackson two million dollars. Then the city goes and says to Bob Filner, this wasn't in the scope of your duties, et cetera, you're on the hook for it. Let's go back to something that you had mentioned just a moment ago. We were talking about Filner's response. Um, he has carefully issued responses. Originally, it was in the form of a DVD. Now, it's just an email that comes out. And they're worded very carefully. Uh, during the DVD response, he says, I did not always respect the women in my office. I, at times, intimidated them. Yesterday, the response via email was, I'm saddened by the charges. I do not believe the claims are valid. Do you think that these are wise responses? Is it better for him just to not say anything at all? Or what do you think of the very strategic wording of these? I, I, if I was uh, recommending to him, I would say have your attorney respond if you need to respond at all, and you probably don't want to respond at all. Clearly, Irene McCormick Jackson is in a very tough spot, and this is why a lot of women haven't come forward. That's why she was reluctant to, to come forward. Uh, but I'll tell you, there's one winner in this. There is one winner in this, and that's Gloria Allred. She is salivating at the chance to depose Bob Filner. And if it comes to that, just listen to the question she's going to ask him. You said you've got problems. You need help. What type of help do you think you need? And watch him twist in the wind. This is, I think, what she's got the skin in the game. Yeah, because she doesn't mince words. That's and, an understatement. And so when you saw that she was now being uh, sort of added to the case against Filner, Gloria Allred, high-profile attorney, what was your thought then? A bunch of us, to be perfectly honest with you, had a pool going about two weeks ago <laughs> to see when she was going to come in. Especially sort of what took you so long kind of thing? Well, we, because we heard there's so many... Uh, women. Now, I know Irene McCormick Jackson well. I dealt with her when she's a reporter. I dealt with her when she's at the port. But a lot of us, when she walked in the room yesterday, you know, were surprised. I, did, I had no idea it was going to be her. Th one thing that really hurts the mayor in this is this person, because of her particular background, has credibility with sure. the media. They yeah. know her. And let me tell you something. This is an extremely credible woman. Okay. Coming from John Dadian, extremely credible woman. We'll see what happens next. Seems to be another day, another development in the story. Also, we are talking to Gloria Allred at 7.50 this morning, live right here on our show. Hope you're on your toes. Okay. <laughs> John,